see the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name's Brian, and today is Friday, February 9th, 2024, and this is episode 630 of the Lots Project podcast, and today is titled Barely Looked Up, and I'll be chatting about my return trip to Savannah, latest on the neighbor's yard art, more UPS fun, and more. And as always, I got a bunch of other shit to talk about before I get to the stuff that I set up last night, because, man couple things rolled in this morning that I want to mention that I will start. I will start uh, at the beginning here, but let's first check in with the coffee crew over in the live chat, see who's hanging out, grab a cup of coffee, and we will get to it in a minute. Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone? Pete in early. Pete and all his alter personalities. Pete, Brian Norton. Hey, look, Brian Norton, um, did you... Is that the Food Forest Farms? Um, is that the Food Forest Farms YouTube channel currently working in my chat? I thought I saw it pop up. I don't know if you changed your name. I don't know if you changed your settings. I don't know if they finally cleared the glitch where your comments wouldn't show up. But would you um, would you sign into Food Forest Farms and see if you can if I can see your comments or not? Good morning, Pickle Pete. Hey, now how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unloose the goose after party <laughs> gingerbread farms good morning pip wondering what music to listen to i wonder what he ended up deciding i threw my um my hat in the ring with uh the three recent albums and i don't even know if they're the most recent but the recent albums by eric church um eric church uh heart and soul either of the, any of the three would be a good choice especially for friday morning i think uh digger hanging out jim 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 how we doing man i um i thought about you this morning actually N not in a weird way uh rachel how we doing k bonk and uh D chris dixon good morning good morning good morning uh, Pickle Pete says, nope, it's an alt. Okay, well, I thought I had pop comments pop up all of a sudden all over um, old comments that you had made on videos on the channel. I never got them unless I went to the video, looked in the comments like you were just blocked for some reason. And um, I thought the bunch popped up. So I don't know. I don't know. I assume that you're probably uh, you're probably banging away. Um... Oh, am I freezing? Yeah, it's because uh, it's pouring rain here right now, like absolutely downpouring rain. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Um... <sighs> <laughs> oh man let's get to it what is in the cup today in the cup today we have um wow it is really raining guys <laughs> here it comes it's supposed to rain for four days here it's supposed to rain by four for four days straight so we will we will see um in the cup this morning, brand new bag. Got to open it up uh, a breakfast blend this morning, and it is it is phenomenal. I'm excited to uh, be sipping on it. Nothing wrong with that GSD. I've been drinking for the last uh, nine presses, but this breakfast blend, it's solid. It is definitely solid. Um, uh -uh. Let's see. Mike's Homestead says, Sheriff Jones of Butler County, Ohio, check out the guy's public address about info from the National Sheriff's meeting. Hmm. National Sheriff's meeting, huh? National Sheriff's meeting. Uh, <laughs> Pip says nine times. Well, I get, I get nine presses from a pound, give or take, uh, a bottom of the blend edition, bottom of the bag edition um one pound divided by 42 grams give or take nine presses 
It's math, dude. It's just math. Water temp for the press, 202. 198. 202? Brian, what's the what's the best price for or what's the best um what is the best temp for press? 202? 198. Somewhere in there. I think. I think I uh I run mine to barely steaming on the teapot um and have have shifted to opening the teapot and grinding um grinding <laughs> Pick, pickle beat does the math for me <laughs> 198 is smoother uh I've, I've been grinding uh hand grinding the 42 grams of coffee with the teapot sitting kind of off gassing off so it got to boiling to 12 uh, i open it up it takes a few um minute to 90 seconds maybe two minutes to grind that so i feel as the temperature's coming down and then a long high pour off of the out of the teapot so we'll get uh, a little temperature drop through the dropping through the air so <clears throat> it's kind of where i sit so i'm close i'm close what is 199 and 198 and c has got to be like 98.5 or something like that rest period four minutes sit for four minutes and then uh slowly slowly engage the plunger down to pickle pete uses a boil plus a long drop with gooseneck two to eight minutes jesus christ jim <laughs> good morning hunter how are we doing uh let's get to it let's get to it uh i have all sorts of stuff yesterday Yesterday I made a return trip to Savannah. had some uh, had some interesting <laughs> had some interesting uh, interactions. Uh, but first, I want to hit a couple things. I want to. I woke up this morning. Well, first things first. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. It's going up this weekend. It may have already started its run. I uh, I saw we hit forty seven thousand this morning. Uh, hit forty six thousand last night. Um, it's going to go up this weekend for Chinese New Year. I was looking at the price jump. I was looking at some articles, and there is a historical trend for Bitcoin jumping significantly during the Chinese New Year. I didn't read enough of the article to find out if it drops after or if it maintains for a while after the pump. But there is a correlation between the Chinese New Year and um, Bitcoin price bumping. So, um, Rewilder Life got uh, is getting some some cash back from the Celsius lawsuit and uh, should dump it right into Bitcoin. <laughs> should definitely dump it right into Bitcoin. So just at just an FYI, that's uh, that's the news I'm seeing. That is the news, and that starts that starts tonight, I believe. It starts with the the first the the full moon between January twentieth and February twentieth, and I, I believe this year that is uh, February tenth, which may already be happening in China. <laughs> it's an earthquake, guys. <laughs> It's a Norman. It is a Norman scratching session over there, I think. Oh, okay. So that was uh that was sidetrack number one. That wasn't that bad. That was pretty quick. Um <laughs> Rewilder Life says her her, her her uh refund from the from the Celsius lawsuit is rewards for stupid a uh, stupid gamble. <laughs> sometimes you gotta make the gambles and sometimes they pay off. Not as good as you'd hope, but they pay off regardless. So there is that. Jim is yelling about central New York. He's standing in his yard in his underwear, shaking his hand at the sky, screaming about central New York. Central New York! <laughs> oh, anyway, so let's get to the next thing from this morning. Um... I woke up this morning and I, um, I, 
look at my phone as I normally do to see what time it is. And there's an alert on my, uh, there's an alert on my phone and it's an alert I had never seen before. Um, uh, you know, you know, Amber alerts, that's, um, that's for the little kids that get stolen. You know about silver alerts. Corey didn't know about silver alerts this morning. That's like when Jim wanders off and they have to go find him. They put out a uh, they put out a silver alert. And that's actually why I was thinking about Jim this morning, because I was thinking about all these alerts we get on our phone. And um, as soon as I thought about the silver alert, I said, that's just like Jim wandering off. Um, and then uh, this morning. It was a blue alert. And I picked up my phone. I'm like, what the fuck is a blue alert? What the hell is a blue alert? And it got me thinking. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. I just cleared it. I cleared it. I just I went on along making my coffee. And it was just kind of sitting in the back of my head. And so I, go I looked it up. I looked it up. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I looked it up. And I guess here in Tennessee and Texas is another state that has it. A blue alert is for when a law enforcement officer is killed or injured seriously. And the suspect possesses an imminent threat to the public. And I said, hmm, interesting. I looked up where this motherfucker was that, that blew up my phone. And it was four and a half hours away on the other side of Tennessee. So obviously an imminent threat to me. Um, why the fuck are cops so fucking special? There's no fucking alert when I get shot looking for the suspect. I don't know. Do people that kill cops provide, pre present more of an intimate threat to me as a private citizen as anybody else that killed some uh, private citizen? Why are we blowing up phones for cops getting shot? They probably shouldn't have been fucking doing what they were doing. <laughs> Pip says this blue alert mean hunting season. I don't know. I think I think this holier than now worshiping fucking cops is bullshit. They already assume the right that they can take your fucking freedom away. Just a thought. Why we got blue alerts? Gotta get that bad guy. He shot the copper. <laughs> Hunter says I get clear alerts too. What the fuck is a clear alert, Hunter? Never heard of that one. I'm just curious why it's all colors. And wait, wait, is it is an amber alert the color or a name? Wasn't it named after some little girl named Amber or something? <laughs> it's both. Oh, that's Amber was the name of the girl, but it's a color. It's a color. And so they went down the path and went silver alert is for Jim and his, his, uh, peers. Um, yeah, Mike says her, his wife's phone went like, I think I have all the alerts turned off. And then all of a sudden I got something popping up with this blue alert. Amber it's pine sap. That's how we got Jurassic park guys. And the dinosaurs came back. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why why four and a half hours away a cop got shot or injured, why that is blowing up on my phone. I don't know. I don't know. Statewide. It's statewide. Great. Great. Whatever. What was he doing? I want to know the situation. I want to know. But anyway, cop down today. Cop down away. Pip's Pip's calling a neon mauve alert.
<laughs> no. So the idea for a blue alert is they're willing to go against the system. They are willing to go harder to be more careful. Whatever. Whatever. I, I hope they catch the guy. I I don't want to see any human being. I don't want to see any human being be um be shot. I don't want to see any human being be killed. I yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think there's any on my list anymore. <laughs> but uh this this special this special shit. Um my favorite Tennessee is Tennessee is really ripe for the the back the blue line flag right under the don't tread on me flag. Meanwhile, their life says that's I feel like that with all these discounts. I was actually gonna mention that today. Uh when when I was talking about Lowe's. I went to check out at Lowe's yesterday and the lady's like, Do you do you get any of the discounts? <laughs> I'm like, What discounts? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> she's like law enforcement, uh, first responder, ex-military, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Nope. <laughs> like, do you, do you get any of the discounts? And what if I had said, yes, do you need to present some sort of form of identification for, uh, to get these discounts? Cause I'll take three, please. <laughs> I'll take three discounts. <laughs> All of the above. I didn't know I didn't know if I needed to present ID so I did I just like no no and I'd feel dirty I'd feel dirty Pip says there should be a responsible citizens discount <laughs> It's like the human fund I I I donated I donated I made a donation to you in your name to the human fund <laughs> Oh no. Pickle Pete says he takes the veteran discount for his drug war service. <laughs> Canadian Canadian Farm says, says also says he was in the war on drugs. <laughs> just, just say no. <laughs> Dare to not do drugs. <laughs> George killed Susan. With the didn't George kill Susan with the with the stamps? Is that how that all went down? I don't remember. I know I remember Susan dying. Bitcoin now over forty seven thousand five hundred. Just in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> the, yeah, the invitations to the wet. Was it to the wedding? Oh yeah. Rewilder, Rewilder says, um, I will take the tax dependence discount for the folks on my taxes support. I'm going to start claiming like how many, how many, what is the estimated total of, um, what is the estimated total of illegal immigrants in the country right now? Or I don't know. Let's start filling out our taxes with just millions of dependents. <laughs> Only users lose drugs. <laughs> There's somebody that always wants to buy cocaine. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, Chinese New Year Bitcoin price is going to jump. Um, they were saying in the article I read, no... They wouldn't be surprised if they crown uh, forty-eight or forty-nine thousand this weekend um, with the traditional bit, uh, Chinese New Year Bitcoin surge. Uh, I don't know. Do your own research. See if you feel like it's going to come back down the other side. Probably will at some point. But Norton said last night he's sticking by his uh, hundred thousand, hundred thousand by the having. So. That is on record again here. He said he's. this is on uh, February 8th, 2024. 
uh, he he sticks by his assessment from two years ago that uh, we're hitting hundred thousand by um, hitting hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin by the having, which if you don't know, is going to be in mid April, mid to end of April, right around four twenty. <laughs> <laughs> fencing yeah we might gonna have to have some uh some major gains to buy fencing rachel <laughs> i saw jack's uh jack's post the other day that said um it was a meme that said something about uh bitcoin went up again and and somebody and the person replied no the dollar went down i don't care either way i don't care Pickle Pete says 1 million by, uh, by 2023 or 20, 2023, 1 million Pickle Pete says $1 million Bitcoin by 2023, <laughs> 2030, excuse me. Um, uh, yeah, Bitcoin Chinese new year, the blue alert that I got this morning. Uh, let's take a trip to Savannah. Yesterday I had to go to Savannah again because, uh, the laundry mat was absolutely packed on Wednesday when I went down to do my normal laundry, grocery, and errand running. And then, like I said yesterday, I forgot to do a bunch of shit when I was down there because everything was thrown out of whack and it was just a bad day. So I, uh, I, I, I packed up yesterday and went down. I was going to do laundry. I had to um, stop the ups store to drop off um drop off a return to amazon i had to go to lowe's i had to return something to lowe's and pick some other stuff up and then uh if i had time I'm gonna hit that bath and beyond uh and then swing up to delinquents gully and i had to stop and see jamie at off-grid ping and uh and do some stuff out at delinquents gully so I headed down. I got to the laundry mat, and there were uh, several cars there again. And I was I was upset. I was uh, thinking that it was going to be busy. I walked in, and it wasn't bad. Um, so I was able. To, I had plenty of washers to get started. <coughs> I'm starting my laundry, and all of a sudden, I hear this like shrieking, crying. Like I hadn't seen any, any crotch goblins running around or nothing. And I hear this screeching and I'm like, Oh my God, what is that? I thought it was like the belt squealing on a washing machine or a dryer. It, 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 it startled me. Um, and I look over and I just see this thing, um, just screaming by little like four, three, four year old, I'm guessing. I was like, ah, shit. And it was running around. It, was, it wasn't like a, a upset scream. It was like, um, it was like, it was, it was at the circus running around or something. I don't know. Um, and so I get my laundry started. I didn't think much of it. And I'm standing there and I'm, I look around. I find a seat. I sit down. I'm, I'm, I, uh, I start watching videos is what i do while i'm there like educational videos on how to do amazon influencers or whatever i'm i'm i'm, I'm looking to get information for I, I sit there for like an hour and 20 minutes and i just watch videos so i'm sitting there i got my one earbud in i don't put both of them in because i want to be aware of my surroundings in a in a place like that and so i'm looking and so there's two kids in there two kids and got about halfway through my washer. So like 15 minutes in 15 minutes in hadn't been an issue. All of a sudden the one starts running around again, like a goddamn fire siren, like screeching all around the laundry mat in and out of the rows of the, in and out of the rows of the, um, the washers. I don't know what, I don't know if it had, um, the other one's toy or what, but they were kind of similar in age. The other one is running behind it slower, screaming as it was upset. So I got one happier than shit, just screeching. And the another one just crying up. Like it was loud guys. Like it was loud. I don't hear the best. And it was loud. The, 
parents, I look over and like this, right on their phone. Not even a twitch, not even a glance, not even a, hey, come on over here. It's not that those kids didn't listen. They didn't get anything. They didn't get said and like they, there was nothing. There was nothing, not even a blip on the fucking heartbeat of these two. And I sat there and watched the parents as they listened to the kids scream, running around. Not didn't flinch. Didn't fucking flinch. Me and another, uh, another lady that were there, were sitting across from each other. And I kind of like glanced up at her and we locked eyes. And the look in her eyes was, I thought there was going to be a murder. Maybe two little murders. Do two little murders add up to a big murder? And is there, is there an alert in, is there an alert in Tennessee for, for two child murders in a laundry map? Is that like a, a orange alert or something? Or no, that's when Bitcoin goes up. I, I don't know. But yeah, this other lady looks at me. Just with this stare, and I was like, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. No words were spoken. It was all, it was like tele- telepathy or um, or sign language or something. <laughs> but the luckily, luckily, the their dryers were almost done, and they didn't um, gingerbread house alert. <laughs> gingerbread farms or gingerbread like Hansel and Gretel. Uh, luckily I thought, I think their cycle was way ahead of mine because it wasn't long and they dumped all their, their laundry in a cart and went and threw it in the trunk of their car with no basket or anything. It was impressive. It was impressive. You never know. You never know how the, how the, how the, um, laundry mat's going to go. Canadian farm says there's a Hansel and Gretel alert. Hansel, like from Zoolander. You guys like Zoolander? Great movie. Great movie. You should watch it for sure if you haven't. Pickle Pete says, try new concert earphones. They take down a notch, but folks can't sneak up on you. Uh, I do have hear through on my on my Jabra Active Elites. They uh, they have speakers in them, so you can hear through the music. Uh, my problem is they um, they when I'm listening to videos and I'm trying to pay attention, I can filter out clean noise from my one ear like noise people talking and stuff um as if i'm listening in the other ear if i have them in and i hear have the hear through going through it it fucks with me i like just don't pay attention enough that that's it's just distraction um jim says the question is would they have looked up if you stuffed one of them in the dryer probably not probably not there was a day I, I literally saw kids running around in the laundromat opening dryers and the mom did nothing. Opening dryers that were running and people were losing their money because they weren't sitting there watching their dryer. And this fucking kid was walking along the bottom um, the bottom uh, row of dryers and just opening the doors and shutting them. And I don't know if intentionally stopping the dryers, but like motherfucker if i walked up to that and my dryer was off and i saw that little crotch goblin running around doing that shit there'd have been fucking hell to pay i would have probably put the thing in the in the (laughs) (laughs) little tax rates up laundry baskets what do we have a favorite Rachel is asking about laundry baskets. Hey, Corey, do you know what the brand of that is? Collapsible one. We use collapsible laundry baskets. Corey's looking. It's um, 
it's just a generic collapsible laundry uh basket it's white with gray um poly flexible expandable panels so you can just push it down and it, it stays flat so huh Oh yeah, yeah. We have the solid size. They make them with um, they they make them with holes also. So Canadian Farm says, wondering if Kyle's practicing making fire. Probably, probably, um, probably making um, probably making fire. Kyle's been having a rough couple days, guys. So if you um, if you guys can uh, if you guys can pump him up if you guys can message him and and tell him tell kyle happy birthday even though it's not his birthday if everybody that has kyle on facebook messenger or on uh, on telegram could reach out and <laughs> wish him a happy birthday that would be fantastic um uh, kbox says 47.2 central new york bump Ryler says thanks, uh, but the collapsible buckets you can use for water don't do it. Uh, we have some collapsible buckets, and I can see them not being the the greatest for continual water use. Uh, I I think in a pinch they would work, but yes, I don't find that they are. Um... Oh yeah, yeah, Rachel. The 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 baskets are on the uh, Amazon on my Amazon storefront. Amazon.com slash shop slash the lots project. Look under camping recommended product list, I think. Thanks, Pip. Thanks, Pip. Uh, la, la, da. <laughs> Canadian Farms says this. I, I hope he practices writing names on paper. <laughs> he can't spell. <laughs> he can't. He can't spell. <laughs> Okay, Bonk, I know CNY is Chinese New Year, but uh, Jim's over there screaming Central New York, um, waving his hands at the sky, and and uh... <laughs> oh no, no, no! All right, thanks, thanks for the happy birthday wish to Kyle. Um... <laughs> Dixon nailed it. I love it. <laughs> He's going to be all strategizing everything. He's going to have this perfect blindside set up. It's going to be his highlight. He's going to be <laughs> He's going to be so proud of it. He's going to have worked the whole thing for the whole for the whole day. He's going to have it all set up. They're going to take out this biggest competitor and he's going to be sitting at tribal council and they're going to be Jeff Probe's going to be ready. All right, it's time for you to vote. Kyle, you're first. Kyle turns to the guy next to him and goes, how do you spell your name? <laughs> Chris Dixon, you're fantastic. You just made my day. <laughs> Rachel says she needs the laugh for this show in the morning. I think I need it, too. <laughs> my God. Oh, man. Jim, you can clip that and send it to Kyle for sure. Uh, anyway, so the 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 little kids ruined my morning at the at the laundry map. As soon as they were gone, it was fine. It was really fine. Actually, as soon as they were gone, most of the other people left too. I don't know if they were hanging out to listen to these kids scream or something, but then I was pretty much in there by myself, which is it's, it's the best. It's the best. Me and the employee hanging out. <laughs> hey, Bill, how do you spell Bill? Uh, so then I moved on UPS store. I was dropping off cable that I, I picked up. I picked up the wrong cable. And so I had to send it back. This was my first time um, with the process of just dropping off the item at um, <laughs> dropping off the item at UPS. Uh, I've had to box. I boxed it up before. I've uh, printed labels before. I boxed it up and just brought it back with them. Chris Dixon's 
Chris Dixon says the problem with going out in public is the public. <laughs> very true. Very true. Um, uh, but I've never just had to take the item that I had and hand it to the lady, not in a box, not with a label, uh, and then have it, have it, have them scan the code on my phone. That's pretty slick. And I, I mean, I get, I get they're like trying to reduce the number of boxes running through. So then they, they pack it up at the end of the day or the end of the week and then it gets shipped on in a group box to Amazon. But um, that was pretty slick. I was, I was excited about that. I didn't have to find, um, I didn't have to find um, a box to put it in. And I think this was the option and it was the only option for this, but I think it was the option because it came in a box with other things. And for some reason, Amazon realized that the box that they sent this in, if I was going to use it for a return box, it was going to be enormous. Uh, but yeah, I just had to put it in the, the original packaging and take it and hand it to them. So that was cool. That was pretty easy. Um, I can't say as much for my deliveries. Uh, I did all my errands and I was coming back to town. And as I came into town, the, the UPS truck was sitting downtown, downtown, downtown. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, I got two things out for delivery and I don't have service around here. So I, I, I don't necessarily get the alerts when it's been delivered. You know, when, when you get Amazon delivered and it delivers and it gives you the little thing and it gives you an email, I don't get those uh, necessarily on time because of the cell signal. So I was like, oh, he's downtown. He's already passed the post office. I'm sure he dropped my shit off. Two things, two Two things, one from Amazon and one not from Amazon, all supposed to be delivered yesterday. So, and they said out for delivery, not just not just expected delivery date, scanned out for delivery. And so I stop at the post office and I ask the lady and she's like, no, don't see anything. Don't see anything. <laughs> and I... I was like, okay, this weird. This is weird. So I walk out and I could see down the road, I could see the 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 UPS truck still sitting there with his hazards on. I think he uh, was getting lunch at the Mexican restaurant. And so I sat in my truck and I was like, I got a few minutes before I needed to be home. Um, I'll sit here and when he drives by, maybe he'll swing in here and I just grab my packages. I don't have to come back tomorrow again because I don't plan on leaving the house today. Uh, the, my house <laughs> froze up, froze up a little bit. Uh, and so I sat there and waited, I waited and I waited and maybe 10 minutes later, uh, here comes the UPS truck rolling down the road, not going real fast. I mean, it's 25 mile an hour zone. So he really wasn't going that fast and rolls right by the post office and leaves. And I'm like, huh? My stuff's out for delivery, but he didn't stop on the way by going one direction and he didn't stop on the way by going the other direction. I don't know what, how he's going to deliver my shit if he doesn't stop. So I pulled out and I followed him, not following him, but he just happened to be ahead of me on the road and I get home and I'm like, okay, I look at the updates. It's still, they still say it's out for delivery and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm guessing there's more than one UPS truck, but why? in the world would they send more than one truck to the same town especially a town this small you would think that their logistics would would funnel it through the same place going to the same zip code and uh, no still out for delivery still out for delivery by 9 p.m yep by 7 p.m as soon as that time came i get an update we attempted to deliver your package and were unsuccessful. We will try again tomorrow. We attempted to deliver your package. Now, I'm trying to figure out if there's two trucks legitimately that there's two trucks or if what uh, what the people told me 
that there are trucks, more trucks than drivers at this facility, and they load the trucks, scan them out for delivery, and then at the end of every shift, they go in and scan them all. Couldn't deliver them. Attempted delivery. I don't know. I don't know. But next time I run into the guy, next time I run into the, the UPS guy, I'm going to be like, are you the only driver that comes to, 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 to Saltillo? Are you the only one that comes to this area? Or do they come from different uh, UPS de depots? Because I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can't for sure say that that's true or false until I, I talk to the driver. But I have a sneaking suspicion. I have a sneaking suspicion that... My stuff's on a truck and it'll come today and it'll say out for delivery again. Chris Dixon says that happens a lot to me with Amazon when they drop UPS at the post office. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still up in the air whether they got more than one truck or not. Um, what is else is on this list? Lowe's, uh, I think I mentioned it, but Lowe's super easy on the return process. That's that's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. Jim, um, Jim says we don't have a regular driver. We get a different person every day. That comes with senility. It's the same dude. <laughs> you just don't remember him. <laughs> um, super easy to return. Super easy. I, uh, I would, like I said, I was counting time, uh, to get back. Uh, I had to, I had to get back. So Corey could get, get and do her, uh, to her afternoon exercise at the end of uh, her work day. Uh, so the dogs don't freak out when she leaves, uh, when she leaves and they're all alone, it's, it's just more convenient and easier to have somebody here. So I was, I was targeting getting back for that time. And so I knew, I knew how long I needed out at Tim's or approximately. And, um, and so I was going to go to Lowe's and at the, when I walked out, I was going to see if I had enough time to make it up there and then still get back. So I was dreading having to return shit at Lowe's, but literally walked in, handed her the boxes of screws and the receipt. And she's like, it's on your card. <laughs> it's on your card. Chris Dixon says our UPS driver is a skin changer. No, nah, dude, you just looked into the sun last time. <laughs> Your eyes were all blotchy. <laughs> but super fast, like l lightning fast at Lowe's. Uh, I guess if you have a receipt and you used a card, it, it it's just, <clears throat> they scan it and uh, away we go. So that was cool. It got in and out of there, and it, it allowed me the time to go up to Tim's, up to Delinquent's Gully, putting together a uh, a punch list for getting getting camp open. Uh, it's it's going to get a little chilly here again. It's not super cold like we had the cold snap, I don't think. But um, this little warm pop really got the got the spring juices flowing. Uh, people are wanting to plant things. People are uh, are looking to get their gardens going. Tractor supply was like overflowing with people looking at bushes the other day. <laughs> or bushes and trees and roots and all the shit they have for sale. Seeds. So it's it's in the air. Spring fever for sure. Um, so I want to get that camp rolling. And I think it's going to be easier to do the stuff. A lot of the stuff I need to do before it starts growing in um, for the season. And the green is starting to pop around here. So. It's not going to be long, and that stuff is just going to be fucking uh, chest high. Uh, so I swung out there. I did a walk around. I took an eval on the four sites we're going to do initially for the for the first run, the first opening. Um, got kind of a, a punch list for the property for the listing, um, and just made it. I got to I'm gonna gonna circle back with Tim here and, uh, the early next week and make sure everything's kosher. And then that's, uh, that's going to go full steam, probably one to two days a week, depending on what else is going on. Uh, just get out there and get that camp open, uh, going into spring. So that was productive. Got to walk around. I was going to do it on Friday, but it's supposed to pour rain all day today. And, uh, man, already it's just off and on pouring rain. So I'm glad I'm not out there walking around in that. 
And then after that, I had to swing into Jamie's and he was kind enough to let me shovel a tote full of dirt. Why do you need a tote full of dirt? I am going to be doing a new project with our uh, our plant Velveeta. I've told you guys about Velveeta, right? You guys know about Velveeta? Dixon says it'd be neat to see how that little creek runs through there with the runoff. It doesn't really fluctuate that much. It's um it's interesting. I thought the same thing, Chris. After the snow and then the the week of downpour, I got out there like regular, like right the day after the rain, uh, maybe two days, just enough for that to to kind of soak in. The level of the creek was higher, but not as much as I thought it would be. And I still haven't found where it all goes. And I have to believe that it's not on his property um, as I've chased it. It's it'll be. I have a lot of uh, a pretty good idea, a couple of spots where we'll be able to dam it up a little bit and uh, and do some water take. Uh, that is definitely a seep or a spring at somewhere because even in the midst of the super dry last summer, it um, it was still flowing a little bit. So, yeah, it. Uh, I was hoping that it would be like to the banks of it. <laughs> it looks like it's been more of a steady, steady uh, erosion than a fill up and uh, and stay full kind of uh, creek bed. So I don't know. I don't know. Rewilder Life nailed it. Velveeta is our snake plant. Uh, and it needs to be uh it needs to be propagated. It needs to be cut down. It needs to be divided. It needs to be not as big as it is in the pot that it's in, uh, from our assertions. <coughs> so while we while we were looking into what to do with it, how to manage that, how to propagate it, or at least divide it so that our plant is healthier. Uh, we came up with some, we saw several methods. Uh, one was through water propagation. Uh, basically, the leaves of the snake plant can repropagate in water if you if you treat them properly. Uh, also, you can divide them like uh, like hostas or daylilies, uh, even comfrey that just pull them apart. Um, they also you can also do them in soil. And so I thought this would be a cool project since that we just, our intention, uh, our main intention is our main, oh, Jim wants to know why Velveeta. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, our main intention is to um, make the plant healthier. We we really feel it's root bound in the, in the pots in weird came in from Lowe's and it's not appropriate, <laughs> but um uh, we're going to trim it anyway. We're going to, we have to knock it down anyway. So I'm going to attempt to, to propagate a shitload of snake plants in a tote, um, in a tote with, um, yeah. And, and I'm just going to basically you cut the leaf off and then you can cut the leaf into small sections and you let it scab over, you let it heal. You drop it in wet soil, like um, like uh, Pickle Pete says, and uh, it will reroot and basically grows like comfrey. It doesn't grow the 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 leaf from what I see. The leaf doesn't grow again, but it grows out the bottom and sends up runners. So I'm just gonna take like a big um, a big uh, toad of soil and and follow the process and uh, just probably. You know, do as many as I can fit in there. It'll be um, pickle piece says use a sarpy. Direction matters. Yes, I did. I uh, I realized that. And um, when uh, when I was watching the the instructional videos, they were very adamant at that direction does matter. So I'm gonna see how many I can fit in this tote. And uh, as they root, which is a it sounds like it's a pretty long cycle, three to five weeks uh, before you see significant root growth. Um, 
I'm just going to, I'll, I'll put them on marketplace. And if somebody wants to buy one, I'll pick up a pot and, and sell them a, a snake plant. And if the thing flops and they're, they're no good, uh, basically I had to get rid of them anyway to thin the plant out. Interesting, interesting idea, I think. Um, Marie Wilder says, I need to have a sacrificial plant. I have six and more babies. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to start them. And if it's if it goes sideways, then I just dump it in the compost pile. Big deal. Big deal. Um, Jim wants to know why our plant is named Velveeta. Our snake plant that we we purchased at Lowe's and we brought back to get some air exchange in here to get some green in here to get some growth plant uh plant in the in the the, the trailer here um idiocracy do you know who Velveeta in idiocracy is because that's one of our favorite characters it's one of Corey's and I's favorite characters. Corey, what's the other one's name? <laughs> so when they do the when they do the news broadcast and they're talking about they're talking about not sure having to go to rehabilitation, or I think they were were they actually it was the news report from the from the the court case when um when not sure was convicted and 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 having to go to um having to go to rehabilitation they have the the classic image of the news broadcaster the the dude with no shirt on with the huge pecs and the 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 hair and then the big titted chick next to him in the in the corset top and uh yeah well her name is velveta <laughs> And so when they throw it to the field reporter, when they throw it to the field reporter and sh her name's for Micah. So her, our next plant is going to be named for Micah. Um, the, the, the field reporter, the little, I think she might be Hispanic, Latino chick, uh, a little heavier. Her name is for Micah the 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 hot big titted chick at the news desk her name is Velveeta. so we named our snake plant after the news reporter on idiocracy or the fake cheese you can get and melt for craft macaroni and cheese pip says i've been meaning to dress is not sure for halloween <laughs> what are you gonna wear an orange jumpsuit <laughs> and crocs <laughs> You need, you need to make a find a big fat dude to sit on you. Or, I mean, Corey says uh, a lot of the clothes now are starting to look like pro wear. So you could probably find some pro wear. <laughs> oh, God. It's Friday. It's Friday for sure, guys. Friday for sure. After the show, if you uh, if you have nothing to do, if you need some more entertainment, I uh, I think that um, I think that Brian said he's going to be doing a tasting of the Tanzanian pea berry. Uh, flip on over to his channel. Flip on over to his channel and check out the Tanzanian pea berry uh, initial tasting review. I have stuff I have to do after the show every morning, or I would join. Uh, and I don't want to ruin the surprise. Actually, he's going to be sending some out. And I'm looking to taste it, so I might just uh, I might avoid that video until I get it, and I can have my own my own thoughts on it, and we'll compare notes. So, <laughs> Pip says the white shirt, the American flag vest, and the M forty nine. Um, wouldn't that be more Macho Camacho? I can't. I can't remember his whole name, Alessandro uh, Chicken Wing, huh? Wayne Alessandro Mountain Dew. Wayne Alessandro Mountain Dew Cheetos. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, is there anything else on this list? Oh, update, quick update before we get out of here. Update on uh, on the yard art situation here in Saltillo. Uh, a little bit of update, uh, not not a whole lot. Three major points um, of 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 interest. One is it looks like, and this has only been a um, this has only been one message. Has not been verified yet, but um, it, it actually was one comment on one post in the in the local Facebook group. But it sounds like uh, the owner of the restaurant with alcohol service across the street from the crazies may be uh, dipping out, maybe dipping out, maybe closing, maybe uh, maybe done with it. Maybe he's not making enough money. But if he's not making enough money, all I can say is it's his own damn fault because. The place is a fucking gold mine if it was done right. And I'm not saying I'm not going to put, I'm not saying I'm putting money into it. I'm not saying that I want to own it. I'm not saying that I could do better. I'm not saying anything to that extent, but I probably, I probably could have done better. Um, you got a gold mine across the street to bring in fucking customers. Uh, so that, that was some news. Other news is they've started, they're talking about starting a petition, a petition. We're going to petition in town to make them clean up their, their, uh, distasteful, uh, yard under the city slum ordinance. Now I have questions because I've driven around the city limits of Saltillo. And as much as people might not like their taste in yard decorations, their yard is far from the worst in this city. So I think people might be poking the bear and the bear might poke back and say, go fuck yourself, clean up all your yards. And then I'll think about cleaning up my maintained yard with my art in it. So now I'm kind of like leaning towards the crazies that have the fucking yard art for sure. For sure. <laughs> um, Everybody and their brother is, is commenting on this. We need to do something. I don't even live there and I'll sign the petition. Like, it's for the children. People's kids drive by there and they don't understand what it is. Then talk to your fucking kids. Weird. You could use that as a parenting moment. That's why I don't have any with me. <laughs> I don't want any more. Um, uh, yeah, so petition, petition going out, city slum ordinance. I, I can see this going absolutely sideways. And then, um, so there are multiple local Facebook groups the for the town. Good morning, John. Thanks for swinging in. Um, Canadian Farm says that they don't want to talk to their kids. Well, yeah, of course. Um, Pip says, why give the crazies more attention? That's what I was just going to say. So the other Facebook group, the local Facebook group, um, said no more. No, not what, no more posts, no more posts about the, the people. They're just seeking attention. Uh, you're, they're just seeking attention. And every time you post about them, they're getting what they want. I am not allowing any more posts in my group. And you should have heard the screams the screams but my first amendment to make a post on a private platform in my group yeah no go fuck yourself uh is basically the answer they gave them but yeah just the screams and shrieks of they you say they have the first amendment right to do it and i have the first amendment right to post about it Hey, Carrie. Good morning. Good morning, Carrie. Says, I think I'm going to join the local discussion forum. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Jim says, that the, "Are these the people that complain? The, the, the people complain the same ones that have the the giant fuck Biden banners? Probably." Q man, these people that are putting all the stuff in their yard. Uh, Q Q has told me that it's part of the plan, man. That they're gonna get Biden elected, and if we don't stop this, this this blasphemy in the yard, Trump isn't gonna come and save us. He's gonna drain the swamp, man. Orange man returns. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> We're in an hour, guys. I got to wrap it up here. I got to wrap it up. I got to be done for the week. I, I ruined my keyboard yesterday. I have uh, I have this remote keyboard here, Bluetooth keyboard that I use. Dumped like a fucking liter of water on top of it by accident. <coughs> she no worky no more. So it's going to be a long day typing on the laptop up here. Um, Yeah. Chris Dixon says, I'm glad to see people everywhere are exactly the same. They talking about Biden and Trump up in Canada, too? <laughs> Jim screams, Central New York! <laughs> Chinese New Year! <laughs> hey, guys. Um, it's been a fun week. I've enjoyed it. I appreciate all you guys coming in, hanging out every morning, making this fun. Uh, some people say they need the laughter as much as, uh, and I need it as much as you guys. So I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you. And I appreciate you listening. If you enjoyed the show, it's always free to hit that like, share, and subscribe to return value for value. Please consider joining one of the YouTube membership tiers or listening on any value for value platform like Podverse or Fountain.fm. Visit thelotsproject.com, find more information, and find all my links. If you got nothing to do, swing on over to Pickle Pete, um, the, the, the Food Forest Farms, the Food Forest Farms um, YouTube, and check out this Tanzanian pea berry, especially if you're a big coffee fan. Brian will be talking a lot about it, giving you a ton of information, and uh, letting you know what the new blend or what the new beans taste like. Uh, other than that, have a fantastic weekend. and. Uh, yeah, we'll see you in the Telegram group over the weekend, or we'll catch up with you here on Monday.